today's episode of Lessons from an Entrepreneur. We venture into Yummy World, a cakes and pastries business that is operated by a married couple. Jessica and Samuel share their business entrepreneurship journey that was birthed from a personal challenge and a passion to make a difference in the cake and pastries business. Experts say you can never go wrong with the food business. Our entrepreneurs today, Jessica and Samuel, set up Yummy World Kenya, a cake and pastry business in Kenya. Uh, they share their journey of setting up a business as a couple and some of the challenges they had to encounter along the way. My name is Melissa Odor and this is Lessons from the Entrepreneur. My name is Jessica. I'm the founder and the CEO of Yummy World Kenya, a mother of two, married to Samuel. My name is Samuel Pere. I do the marketing, I do deliveries, and uh, basically the customer interaction side of things, as she does the production. We've been together in this for uh, close to what? Close to 10 years. 10 years in terms of running the business, but now. As a company, officially, I think we've done five or five, between five and six there. Yes. For us, we do pastries and cakes. So basically cakes, other pastries like croissants. We also do event packages, mainly sound, MC, and wedding cakes or party cakes. And at the same time, Koi does a lot of training for people who want to learn how to bake. But zone is uh, done on need basis. Let's say if you have some small parties, you can call us to do for you snacks, like samosas, sweets, those small, small snacks that are done when, when you don't have like that major cooking. For Jessica and Samuel, the creation of Yummy World Kenya began from a simple need to cater to the pastry needs of their friends and be more at home for the sake of their children. Their roles as a couple managing the cake and pastries business is quite clear. The origin of the name began almost not like a joke, but was just we just trying to play around with names. We looked at the issue of a vision of a greater purpose and a greater growth, and we saw ourselves really taking it to the world. So naturally, just turned from Yami to became Yami World, and we decided to go from there. For us to start Yami World, we had inspirations and I think number one was we wanted to be more creative and I felt I wanted to interact with customers and just understand what customers like. Then at one point um, our son had a challenge of seeing the mother because of the crazy shit. Basically the hotel industry you know that there's a lot of issues with time. Shifts are crazy. You can be on night shift, you can be on day, afternoon that will end at night night that will end early morning. So our son got to a point also where he missed the mom and was like, hey mom, go a job. And that prompted us to think a lot about family. And so we decided to also venture out. So initially we started when we were still at work. Um, started building up on the brand, um, doing one or two weddings over the weekend, a few cakes here and there. Then finally, at one time, we were we actually probed by our sister to do it. <laughs> and we really do appreciate that that initial push. And we resigned in what? 2016. 2016. Yes. Yeah, so officially the journey now began as a brand in 2016. When we began that thought process of wanting to build up the brand, and uh, Koi started doing orders and decided seeing the business can, can pick. We decided to pull in our savings, buy some things before she quit job. We randomly went to town. At that time, there was a Muindi on Biashara Street. Yeah. Bought an oven, bought this, bought that. Because um, initially we started with the home oven, the four burner with an oven. And a hand mixer. Exactly, that's the one you had used for. The longest time. Even wedding cakes. Yes. yes. Jessica takes us through the simple yet artistic work of decorating a cake. 
Uh, I'm just with the icing, it was uh, baked already. So I'm supposed to finish the decoration. So this is called soft icing. It's cream. Most guys love this one because it has less sugar. And mostly, most guys prefer it for, for birthday cakes. But nowadays I see even wedding cakes, guys are going for these than the, than the hard icing. And you have to make sure you're clean when you're handling cakes. Because as soon as this cake is already cooked, it's cold. So if you're not in a clean place, then you handle it when maybe your hands are dirty. It's very easy for guys to get to get um, food poisoning. This is um, red velvet crumbs. So you just decorate. My hands are clean. You can do this with, with gloves. I'm going to decorate with this. This is called a piping bag. This is what guys use to pipe the roses on top of the cake. Use some chocolate to decorate. So sometimes I make my own. Sometimes I buy. Depends. We have these are called toppers. Normally we buy them. We have cake accessory shops that normally sell these things. You don't have to stress yourself. They come ready. And It's ready to, to go for delivery. Like any other food business, the cakes and pastries business also comes with its share of challenges, from unfair competition to finding customers who appreciate their products. It was a challenge, reaching out to people. We had to, to think, as in how can we reach people? in a way that it's not too expensive since it's, it's a business that was starting. And, and then reach out to the clientele that we were, targe we were targeting. So for him, he really had to come up with ideas. He really had to work. Even the basics of KPLC, I didn't say that, but yeah, <laughs> true. You have a big order, you are ready to bake, and yes. then lights go off for a day or two. So will you cancel? Will you look for a fellow baker and bake at their place and decorate yes. and share the profit with them? We also have had issues with uh, sometimes, like the time we had a shop at, at uh, near Spamo. And yeah. unfair competition, you know, those are the small, small things in every other business. Mm -hmm. So we had put up a big signage and all this kind of thing. So somebody made it disappear. They come in the morning and shh, it's not there. So you, you ask around the time, no, I think it is so and so's. Um, yeah, so that was something else, and <laughs> um, it really brought us down for a season because we really felt um, demotivated. Mm -hmm. But we were able to pull up from there and move on. Yes. And then COVID came. Oh, that that, that was something. Yes. The challenges they encountered, especially during the COVID season, only served to make them even stronger as they navigated the pricing, quality, and marketing issues. When COVID hit and they put the, the curfew, it was a bit hard. So the, the, the business went down. And then where we, our shop was, we had, um, we had schools. There's a college um, and the other schools. The schools were closed and the kids went home. And there was no business. There was no business. So, but we, we kept on pushing. <laughs> 
and I think after like four months that I'm inside it, it's not working. I think also another challenge is that the market is saturated. Saturated. Yes. And yes. So you really have to think what can I do different? Don't just stay there and be comfortable. You have to think what do I do different uh, so that I can keep my customers and also keep attracting more customers and also get those referrals. You know what they say, yeah. what you ordered versus what you got. It's a question of quality and excellence that Jessica and Samuel also face in their day-to-day -day business as they deliver cakes and pastries to different clientele. Here are some of the lessons they encountered. Getting a customer to understand that you will not compromise on your quality for the sake of giving them a better price and they need just to add a little bit more because of the quality um, was a challenge but I think we've had a time when we convinced one, somebody we met and they were like, no, you're too expensive more than A, B, C, D. And I told them, I am giving you a money back guarantee. Buy our cake. If you don't like it, I will give you a full refund. And so they bought, they ate. Then they called the next week. I'm like, but now this is uh, when I refund somebody's money. Yes. Then he calls and says, I want another cake and we bake. And they're like, so what's the message? He's like, Apana, you're near Kukula. I loved your work. And yeah. that for me was a pride. We had to to think of of how to accommodate other customers. Guys who felt I don't have that amount of money, but I still want cake. What can you do for me with this amount of cash? Mm. We had to think. Then also when it came to wedding cakes, we got to a point where uh, would, we would work with a customer's budget. Mm. Not now what 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 uh, our prices are would ask a customer what's your budget mm -hmm. then i would sit down and discuss the customer from ambia this is what you can give you with that amount mm -hmm. and it worked mm -hmm. and would get guys who you know you, you do one, one wedding cake then that client will go tell another another customer mm -hmm. hey by the way kunayami world talk to them mm -hmm. they work with your budget and that's how we got our orders mm -hmm. make sure your marketing is good and not only is your marketing good but you're also having a good product yes. because the product is what sells you we always say in this business the business that you have is not the business you're doing now i've baked for you a cake i've given you that is money that's already in my pocket that's not business the real business is what you will say about my product once you've consumed it i don't think there's anything you do different is there yeah. Our focus was building Yami World, and that's what we did. And from 2017, we have no regrets, do we? Yeah. No, we don't. We don't. Guys are doing amazing things outside there. So you really have to work hard if you, if you to start this journey. We love when we receive even the negative feedback from clients. Like, Kwanini Ulifanya Ivi na Tulisema Ivi. For us, we really appreciate that because it makes a difference. Sometimes the design that you had agreed and what you produce, um, somebody, whatever they had in mind, and the way they explained it is different, come up with something different, they may not be too pleased, but when they correct you and the next time you're like, oh, that's what you meant by this and this, the next time it becomes better. When you put God first, there's a way that things just, and that's, during COVID, that's when we saw God. Yeah. As a couple, Jessica and Samuel have learned to appreciate the skills and gifts they bring to the business and are confident of a brighter future for their business. And trust me, come out of my COVID. Okay, finger. <laughs> and also, I, I, would, I would, if you were to, en to enter to this business, make your fellow bakers your friends. Your fellow bakers are not your enemies. And even learning for the people who've been in the industry for long, that people who ask us about maybe five years officially, 10 years inofficially. Mm. The guys who've been in the industry for 20, 30 years. Mm. Sometimes even listening in to them mm. makes all the difference. Somebody tells you this is the way you can do this, this is the way you can do this, you shouldn't do this. Right. Your gift will bring you before kings. And for me, it's something I declare constantly in her life, and I think I would always declare it, that that gift that she has, because for her it's beyond just passion, it's just beyond business, there's a gift I've seen grow in her over time. One thing I know for a fact 
it will bring her before kings. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, thank God. And as we always say, we don't just bake, we create, we create memories. So much to learn, that's for sure, as you set up your cake and pastries business in Nairobi and in Kenya as a whole. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Lessons from the Entrepreneur. My name is Melissa Odwell.